Hello guys, I'm Madam Sheila Shazwin, who will be teaching operating system concepts and the code is CSC520. Today we'll be learning about the introduction, so clear your mind and make some space for this topic. I really want y'all to score this subject, alright? So, this is a list of the things that will be covered today. So the objectives are to describe the general organization of a computer system and the role of interrupts. Second, we have described the components in a modern multiprocessor computer system. And the third one is illustrate the transition from user mode to kernel mode. And the fourth one is discuss how operating systems are used in various computing environments. And the last one is to provide examples of free and open source operating systems. So what does the term operating system mean? Anybody wants to guess? What about car, airplane, printer, washing machine, toaster, compiler? Are those operating systems? Um, operating system is a program that acts as an intermediary between a user of a computer and the computer hardware. And its goals are to execute user programs and make solving user problems easier. It's also to make the user system convenient to use and to use their computer hardware in an efficient manner. Computer system can be divided into four components. The first one is hardware, which provides basic computing resources like CPU, memory, input-output devices. And the second one is operating system, which controls and coordinates use of hardware among various applications and users. The third one is application application programs um, to define the ways in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the users like word processors, compilers, web browsers, database systems, and video games. And the last one is users like people, machines, and other computers. This is the abstract view of components of computer. So what do operating systems do? It depends on the point of view. Users want convenience, ease of use, and good performance. We don't care about resource utilization, but shared computers such as mainframe or mini computer must keep all users happy. Operating system is a resource allocator and control program making efficient use of hardware and manage, managing execution of user programs. Users of dedicated systems such as workstations have dedicated resources but frequently use shared resources from servers. Mobile devices like smartphones and tablets are resource poor, optimized for usability and battery life. Mobile user interfaces such as touch screens, voice recognition. Some computers have little or no user interface, such as embedded computers in devices and automobiles, and it runs primarily without user intervention. The term operating system covers many roles. It's because of myriad designs and uses of operating systems. It's present in toasters, through ships, spacecrafts, um, game machines, TVs, and industrial control systems. It's born when fixed use computers for military became more general purpose and needed resource management and program control. There is no universally accepted definition for operating system. Everything a vendor ships when you order an operating system is a good approximation, but it varies widely. The one program running at all times on the computer is the kernel, part of the operating system. Everything else is either a system program or an application program. All programs not associated with the operating system. Today's um, operating systems for general purpose and mobile computing also include middleware, which is a set of software frameworks that provide additional services to application developers such as databases, multimedia, graphics. 
Next, we have an overview of computer system structure. Computer system operation is one or more CPUs. Device controllers connect through common bus providing access to shared memory. It's concurrent um, execution of CPUs and devices competing for memory cycles. Computer system operation. Input output devices and the CPU can execute concurrently. Each device controller is in charge of a particular device type. Each device controller has a local buffer. Each device controller type has an operating system device driver to manage it. CPU moves data from or to main memory to or from local buffers. Mm -hmm. Input output is from the device to local buffer of controller. And device controller informs CPU that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt. Common functions of interrupts. Interrupt transfers control to the interrupt service routine generally through the interrupt vector, which contains the addresses of all their service routines. Interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction. A trap or exception is a software generated interrupt caused either by an error or a user request. An operating system is interrupt driven. This is the interrupt timeline. Interrupt handling. The operating system preserves the state of the CPU by storing the registers and the program counter. It determines which type of interrupt has occurred and it, se it is its separate segments of code determine what action should be taken for each type of interrupt. This is the interrupt drive input output cycle. I believe that you can look at it yourself and if you do not understand, you can ask me in class. Input output structure. There are two methods for handling input output. After input output starts, control returns to user program only upon input output completion. After input output starts, control returns to user program without waiting for input output completion. After input output starts, control returns to user program only upon input output completion. Wait instruction idles the CPU until the next interrupt. Wait loop, contention for memory access. At most, one input output request is outstanding at a time no simultaneous input-output processing. After input-output starts, control returns to user program without waiting for input-output completion. System call is a request to the operating system to allow user to wait for input-output completion. Device status table com contains entry for each input-output device indicating its type, address, and state. Operating system indexes into input output device table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include interrupt. Next, we have storage structure. Main memory only has large storage media that the CPU can access directly. It has random access. It's typically volatile. It's typically random access memory in the form of dynamic random access memory, also known as DRAM. Secondary storage is an extension of main memory that provides large, non-volatile storage capacity. Hard disk drives, also known as HDD, is a rigid metal or glass platters covered with magnetic uh, recording material. The disk surface is logically divided into tracks, which are subdivided into sectors. The disk controller determines the logical interaction between the device and the computer. Non-volatile memory, also known as NVM devices, is faster than hard disks and is non-volatile. 
It is used in various technologies and it's becoming more popular as capacity and performance increases. Price drops. This is the storage definitions and notation review and I believe that you can read it yourself. So we're going to jump to the next slide. So storage hierarchy. Storage systems are organized in hierarchy, which are speed, cost, and volatility. Caching is the copying information into a faster storage system. Main memory can be viewed as a cache for secondary storage. Device driver for each device controller to manage input output. And it provides uniform interface between controller and kernel. As you can see in the diagram here, this is the storage device hierarchy. So this is how a modern computer works. And if you don't understand the diagram, you can ask me in class. Direct memory access structure. Used for high speed input output devices, able to transmit information at close to memory speeds. Device controller transfers blocks of data from buffer storage directly to main memory without CPU intervention. Only one interrupt is generated per block rather than the one interrupt per byte. Bootstrap program. Simple code to initialize the system. Load the kernel. Kernel loads. Start system daemons. Services provided outside of the kernel. Kernel interrupt driven, hardware and software. Hardware interrupt by one of the devices. Software interrupt, exception or trapped. Software error, for example, division by zero. Request for operating system service. System call. Other process problems include infinite loop, processes modifying each other or the operating system. Multi-programming batch system. Single user cannot always keep CPU and input output devices busy. Multi-programming organizes jobs, code, and data, so CPU always has one to execute. A subset of total jobs in system is kept in memory. One job selected and run via job scheduling. When job has to wait for input output, for example, Operating system switches to another job. A logical extension of batch systems, the CPU switches jobs so frequently that users can interact with each job while it is running, creating interactive computing. Response time should be less than one second. Each user has at least one program executing in memory and is commonly referred to as a process. If several jobs are ready to run at the same time, it is known as CPU scheduling. If processes don't fit in memory, swapping moves them in and out to run. Virtual memory allows execution of processes not completely in memory. This is the memory layout for multi-programmed system. Dual mode operation allows operating system to protect itself and other system components. The dual mode are user mode and kernel mode. Mode bit provided by hardware provides ability to distinguish when system is running user code or kernel code. When a user is running, the mode bit is user. When kernel code is executing, the mode bit is kernel. How do we guarantee that user does not explicitly set the mode bit to kernel? System call changes mode to kernel. Return from call resets it to user. Some instructions designated are privileged, only executable in kernel mode. As you can see here, this is the transition from user to kernel mode. Timer. Timer to prevent infinite loop or process hogging resources. Timer is set to interrupt the computer after some time period. It keeps a counter that is decremented by the physical clock. 
The operating system set the counter. Privileged instruction. When counter zero generate an interrupt. Set up before scheduling process to regain control or terminate program that exceeds a lot of time. Process management. A process is a program in execution. It is a unit of work within the system. Program is a passive entity. Process is an active entity. Process needs resources to accomplish its task. CPU, memory, input output, and files. And initialization, data. Process termination requires reclaim of any reusable resources. Single thread process has one program counter specifying location of next instruction to execute. Process executes instructions sequentially, one at a time until completion. Multi-threaded process has one program counter per thread. Typically, system has many process, some users, some operating system running concurrently on one or more CPUs. Concurrency by multiplexing the CPUs among the processes or threads. Process management activities. The operating system is responsible for the following activities in connection with process management. Creating and deleting both user and system processes, suspending and resuming processes, providing mechanisms for process synchronization, providing mechanisms for process communication, and providing mechanisms for deadlock handling. Memory management. To execute a program, all or part of the instructions must be in memory. All or part of the data that is needed by the program must be in memory. Memory management determines what is in memory and when, optimizing CPU utilization and computer response to users. Memory management activities keeping track of which parts of memory are currently being used and by whom. Deciding which processes or parts thereof and data to move into and out of memory. Allocating and deallocating memory space as needed. Next, we have file system management. Operating system provides uniform, logical view of information storage. Abstracts a uh, physical properties to a logical storage unit. It's called file. Each medium is controlled by device like disk drive, tape drive. Varying properties include access speed, capacity, data transfer rate, access method, file system management. Files usually organized into directories. Access control on most systems to determine who can access what. Operating system activities include creating and deleting files and directories, primitives to manipulate files and directories, mapping files onto secondary storage, and backup files onto stable, non-volatile storage media. So we have a mass storage management. Usually this is used to store data that does not fit in main memory or data that must be kept for a long period of time. Proper management is of central importance. Entire speed of computer operation hinges on disk subsystem and its algorithms. Operating system activities include mounting and unmounting, free space management, storage allocation, disk scheduling, partitioning, and protection. Caching, important principle performed at many levels in a computer, in hardware, operating system, software. Information in use copied from slower to faster storage temporarily. Faster storage checked first to determine if information is there. If it is information used directly from the cache, if not, data copied to cache and used there. Cache smaller than storage, uh, than storage being cached. Cache management important design problem. Cache size and replacement policy. 
So these are the characteristics of various types of storage. Migration of data A from disk to register. Multitasking environments must be careful to use most recent value, no matter where it is stored in the storage hierarchy. From magnetic disk to main memory to cache to hardware register, multiprocessor environment must provide cache coherency in hardware, such that all CPUs have the most recent value in their cache. Distributed environment situation even more complex. Several copies of a datum can exist and various solutions covered in chapter 19. Input-output subsystem. One purpose of operating system is to hide peculiarities of hardware devices from the user. Input-output subsystem responsible for memory management of input output including buffering, storing data temporarily while it is being transferred, caching, storing parts of data in faster storage for performance, spooling, the overlapping of output of one job with input of other jobs, general device driver interface, drivers for specific hardware devices. Protection and security. Protection is any mechanism for controlling access of processes or users to resources defined by the operating system. Security is the defense of the system against internal and external attacks. Huge range including denial of service, worms, viruses, identity theft, theft of service. Systems generally first distinguish among users to determine who can do what. Users' identities, like user ID, security IDs, include name and associated number, one per user. User ID then associated with all files processes of that user to determine access control. Group identifier allows set of users to be defined and controls managed, then also associated with each process. File. Privilege escalation allows user to change to effective ID with more rights. Virtualization allows operating systems to run applications within other operating systems. It is fast and is a growing industry. Emulation used when source CPU type different from target type is generally the slowest method and when computer language not compiled to native code, it is interpretation. Virtualization. Operating system natively compiled for CPU running guest operating systems also natively compiled. Consider VMware running WinXP guests, each running applications all on native WinXP host operating system. VMM, also known as Virtual Machine Manager, provides virtualization services. Use cases involve laptops and desktops running multiple operating systems for exploration or compatibility. Apple laptop running Mac OS X host, Windows as a guest, developing apps for multiple operating systems without having multiple systems, quality assurance testing applications without having multiple systems, executing and managing compute environments within data centers. VMM can run natively, but in which case they are also the host. There is no general purpose host then. So this is the computing environments. Virtualization. Distributed systems is a collection of separate, possibly heterogeneous systems networked together. Network is a communications path. TCP or IP most common. We have local area network, wide area network, metropolitan area network, and personal area network. 
Network operating system provides features between systems across network. Communication scheme allows systems to exchange messages and is illusion of a single system. Next, we have computer system architecture. Most systems use a single general purpose processor and they have special purpose processes as well. Multiprocessor systems growing in use and importance, also known as parallel systems or tightly coupled systems. The advantages include increased throughput, economy of scale, and increased reliability. And there are two types, which are asymmetric multiprocessing. Each processor is assigned a species task. And symmetric multiprocessing, each processor performs all tasks. This is the symmetric multiprocessing architecture. Dual core design, multi chip and multi core, systems containing all chips, chassis containing multiple separate systems. This is the non uniform memory access system. Clustered systems, like multiprocessor systems, but multiple systems working together, usually sharing storage via a storage area network, also known as SAN or SAN, provides a high availability service which survives failures. Asymmetric clustering has one machine in hot standby mode and symmetric clustering has multiple nodes in uh, running applications monitoring each other. Some clusters are for high performance computing and applications must be written to use parallelization. Some have distributed log manager to avoid conflicting operations. This is a PC motherboard. Computer system environments. We have traditional mobile, client server, peer-to-peer, -peer, cloud computing, and real-time embedded. So for traditional, we have standalone general purpose machines, but blurred as most systems interconnect with others like the internet. Portals provide web access to internal systems and network computers, thin clients are like web terminals and mobile computers interconnect via wireless networks. Networking become ubiquitous. Even home systems use firewalls to protect home computers from internet attacks. Mobile. We have handheld smartphones, tablets, etc. What is the functional difference between them and a traditional laptop? Well, it has extra feature more operating system features like GPS, gyroscope, and it allows new types of apps like aug augmented reality. And it uses IEEE 802.11 wireless or cellular data networks for connectivity. And the leaders are Apple iOS and Google Android. Client server, client server computing dumb terminals supplanted by smart PCs. And many systems now servers responding to requests generated by clients. Compute server system provides an interface to client to request services like database. And file server system provides interface for clients to store and retrieve files. Then we have peer-to-peer. -peer. It's another model of distributed system. Peer-to-peer -peer does not distinguish clients and servers. Instead, all nodes are considered peers, may each act as client, server, or both. Node must join peer-to-peer -peer network. It registers its service with central lookup service on network 
or broadcast requests for service and respond to requests for service via discovery protocol. And the examples include Napster and Nutella, voice over IP, such as Skype. For cloud computing, it delivers computing, storage, even apps as a service across a network. The logical extension of virtualization because it uses virtualization as the base for its functionality. M Amazon EC2 has thousands of servers, millions of virtual machines, petabytes of storage available across the internet, and pay based on usage. Also, it has many types like public cloud, available via internet to anyone willing to pay, and private cloud, run by a company for the company's own use, and hybrid cloud, includes both public and private cloud components. Software as a service is one or more applications available via the internet, like word processor. Platform as a service is a software stack ready for application use via the internet, like database server, and infrastructure as a service is servers or storage available over the internet like storage available for backup use cloud computing environments composed of traditional operating systems plus vmms plus cloud management tools internet connectivity requires security like firewalls and load balancers spread traffic across multiple applications. Real-time embedded systems, most prevalent form of computers. It is very considerable, special purpose, limited purpose operating system, real-time operating system, use expanding, many other special computing environments as well like some have operating systems, some perform tasks without an operating system. Real-time operating system has well-defined fixed time constraints. Processing must be done within constraint. Correct operation only if constraints met. Operating systems made available in source code format rather than just binary closed source and proprietary. Counter to the copy protection and digital rights management movement. It is started by Free Software Foundation, which has copyleft GNU public license. And the examples include GNU, Linux, and BSD Unix, including Core of Mac OS X, and many more. And can use VMM like VMware, Player, and VirtualBox. This is the study of operating systems, and you can pause the video to read more about this because I'm going to be moving on to the next slide. Lastly, we have kernel data structure. Many are similar to standard programming data structures. We have singly linked list, we have doubly linked list, and we have circular linked list. So for this slide, you can read it yourself. And if you don't understand, you can ask me, okay? So we have come to the last slide for this chapter and the hash function can create a hash map. As you can see here, and bitmap is a string of and binary digits representing the status of n items. Linux data structures defined in include files. So that's the end of chapter one. And if you don't understand anything, you can just text me or ask me in class. Okay, that's all. Bye.